in this 2017 DD session. RimWorld creator Timon, Sylvester, looks at how Moody and Studios defined RimWorld, not as a game, but as a story generator, and how forcing the team into this frame of mind opened up entirely new mechanisms for creating compelling play. This doc looks at how, as a developer, you can find unique value in doing things that are commonly assumed to be wrong, impossible, are ridiculous. How? By strategically leaving out features. Theorem World T made players engage with features and story elements that are not actually there. How they made better decisions by not planning despite everyone wanting them to plan. And finally, how they shipped with many seemingly critical features missing. But nobody cared because they used a special methodology for selecting features that actually matter instead of the ones that are commonly assumed to be necessary. It was an insightful talk, and now you can watch it for free over on the official DD YouTube channel. In addition to this presentation, THDDDC Vault and its accompanying YouTube channel offers numerous other free videos, audio recordings, and slides from many of the recent game developers' conference events. And the service offers even more members only content for DD Vault subscribers. Those who purchased all access passes to recent events, like ED, and would already have full access to DD Vault, and interested parties can apply for the individual subscription via the DD Vault subscription page. Group subscriptions are also available, game related schools and development studios. Who sign up for DD Vault Studio subscriptions can receive access for their entire office or company by contacting staff via THEGDC Vault Group subscription page. Finally, current subscribers with access issues can contact DD Vault Technical Support. The Gunnar Sutri Job Board is the most diverse. Active and established board of its kind for the video game industry. Here is just one of the many, many positions being advertised right now. Location, Troy, New York. We are looking for an experienced producer to support the production of a new title in development at Valen Studios. The producer will work closely with the project's key leaders and other production team members to successfully execute on a new, groundbreaking, original oop. The producer will help manage the project development from pre-production through to product launch, working with key internal and external stakeholders to deliver on all critical milestones. If you are an experienced game producer, we want to hear from you. Responsibilities, requirements, qualifications, big places, Interested? Apply now. Whether you are just starting out, looking for something new, or just seeing what's out there, the Gunnar Sutri Job Board is the place where game developers move ahead in their careers. The Mo Sutra's Job Board is the most diverse, most active, and most established board of its kind in the video game industry, serving companies of all sizes. From Indie to Triple, looking for a new job. Get started here. Are you a recruiter looking for talent? Post jobs here. Connecting players with characters, giving out details of who they are, and making them stand out in the player's mind is a challenging task. But how about doing that with a few simple motions, idle animations? Those little bursts of motion that trigger when a player leaves a game along for a bit are easy to overlook but can to convey subtle and not so subtle aspects of your game's characters and atmosphere if they are doing well. With that in mind, the Mosutra recently checked in with the broad ARAYOF developers from around the industry to learn what idle animations they most enjoyed as well as what it was that they liked about them.
while very few devs agreed on what games had the most memorable or enjoyable idols, except Xworms in, which everyone apparently loves, all pointed to just how much they made these characters feel alive for them, flashing out the worlds they belong to with only a few frames of animation. Natalie Long had, everything is going to be okay, Earthworms in, had some of the most fun idol animations that I can remember. It was fun because that detail landed more personality. I think, maybe, the 90s were the golden age of idol animations. There are so many titles that come to your mind. But now I am not sure if I am remembering right, which I guess is a side effect of idol animations. You will not remember correctly if ever asked. I loved them though. I used to wait just to watch what a character did. The SNES version of Aladdin had a fun one, because he juggled apples, even when you did not have any more apples in your apple inventory, and you could be like, ha ha, liar. I see those apples. I kind of liked the effect that had on me as a player, because I felt a bit betrayed by the game. Yeah, that one extra apple would have helped, and it was clearly there. The game light loves. It added character, though, because it fit with the personality. Ken Wong, Florence, Earthwormed in suit, skipping rope, with his body, is a really memorable idol. It was so inventive in a game full of inventive and zany animations. Edmund McMillan, the end is nigh. The first one that comes to your mind is Earthworm Jim. I liked that it felt alive. Simon Anderson, our oh boy, one of the first that comes to your mind is Ryu from Street Fighter 3. Not because it's technically impressive, or even the most impressive today. But it was one of those moments where you could simply tell the artist's skill had improved. The air flowing through the legs of his pants as he moves was an impressive addition to a classic stance without it being distracting. And a nice reminder back then that with enough practice, I could do the same. A close second from that game is Diddly as it was surprisingly clever to do little alternating steps in his pose to imply readiness. Yet mixing up the timing of just three poses makes it seem a lot more elaborate than it really is. Of course, I cannot forget mentioning Mario in Super Mario 64. Far being one of the first true 3D platformers, the game had so many small details that made the mass of polygons come alive. The fact that if you would leave the controller alone, Mario would just kind of lounge out of boredom was such a nice little detail. I still remember going to eat dinner, having forgotten to pause the game, and finding Mario asleep. Considering the monumental challenge of making a game as playable and complete in a relatively niche art genre, the attention to detail was amazing. Another thing to consider is that Mario can fall sit down and fall asleep literally anywhere, if not interrupted. For as many complex movements as that game had of bringing Mario in and out of that state and reacting appropriately, if interrupted is pretty robust for such a small thing. There's no shortage of games today that struggle giving an appropriate response during the transition from that uncontrollable state, let alone one that can happen in virtually any point of the game. As an extra mention, I do have a soft spot. Of the common slime anime from Breath of Fire IV. It's one of the most elaborately animated sprites in the game, and in a genre where slime enemies are as common as air, it felt like they wanted to have the best slime of them all. Putting extra time and excessive frames to probe their spot, which is part of charming in a way. Tom Hewlett, the actor at Way Forward, let's go with Sparkster's long idol, in the original Rocket Knight Adventures. It's a pretty weird one. 1. It gives us character detail when, do you find nowhere else in the game, he takes off his hat to reveal hair. 2. He speaks the only text dialogue in the entire game. 3. 
he breaks the fourth wall to say it to the player, as was the fashion at the time. It's also cute and endearing. Baby Duke, D.S.H. Simon the Sorcerer, the first one, where he takes his Wordman out of his head and just chills to the music. The Wordman is typical for the time. The way a sorcerer listens to his favorite tape in the middle of danger and adventure, it makes Simon you a cool cat and not a weak nerd. Also, as a developer, I think it made quite an impact on me. Not only was there dragons, a parallel universe, trolls, and saxophones, but Simon was also like me. He sometimes took out his wordman to chill, even though things got rough. Little effort from the designer, and quite an effect. But Citrine House, you are worthless. A bird poking a bear on the head. Banjo Kazooie.